welcome back to The The Mentors. Mentors. This is Vadim. And Sergey. And you're listening to a show where we tell stories of ordinary people that became extraordinary entrepreneurs despite lack of experience, money, or connections. And today, you're going to be listening to part two of our interview with Claudia Chan about how she grew her conference business, She Summit, and how it has transformed into a business where she is now training and empowering future leaders and existing leaders at really big corporations like PepsiCo, for example. In this episode, we dive deeper with Claudia about the ins and outs of starting an event business. So if you're interested in doing events, making money from them, or adding it as part of the business work that you do already with your organization, you'll want to listen to this episode because we asked Claudia to get into the details of some of the challenges of growing an events company and how to overcome them. And of course, the business that she ended up starting this new business expanded beyond events as well, and she'll get into some of that too. What I love about our interview with Claudia is she is incredibly sincere and open, and she actually talks about the reality of starting a business like that and the challenges therein. Uh, But you'll also learn one really important lesson. You can't predict the direction that your business is going to go in ahead of time. You may have a vision for what it's going to look like, but the only way to actually realize different opportunities is to get started and execute as quickly as possible and get on your journey and the opportunities will come to you when you actually get started. It's like Steve Jobs said, when you're looking back at your career, it looks linear. It looks like the success could have been predicted, but the reality of the trajectory of any career or any business is that it can take a variety of different paths. That's part of what's exciting about the opportunity of being an entrepreneur. Only once you get started on your journey and get into the thick of things will you see what awesome opportunities stand on the other side. And if there's anything in common with most of the entrepreneurs that we've ever interviewed on this show, is it's their ability to stay open-minded, to be able to even see opportunities. So if you're one of these people that is really a planner and wants things to go a certain way, try to challenge yourself a little bit and try and be open-minded so that you can even have the visibility to see these opportunities. Because if you don't, then you might be missing certain things that could make your business successful. If you enjoy this episode, it would mean a lot to us if you share it with at least one friend that you think might find it either useful or motivational today. Please enjoy our interview with Claudia. Super thoughtful about it. Hmm. Uh, And I do definitely want to get to, obviously, how your business morphed because now you're getting into companies and actually helping helping, uh, women within organizations, women leaders, probably because you've impacted at this point doing this for about a decade, tens of thousands of women. But before we get to that, Mm -hmm. that first year, you had some advantage at this point because conferences weren't maybe as big of a deal. You weren't really competing with a ton of women's conferences. These are assumptions that I'm making. But what did you do in that first year? You said you were putting together your team to make sure by 2012 you launched this conference. But how were you prioritizing your activities for something that takes so much lift? Gosh, you're really bringing me down memory lane. (laughs) So, and yes. So, and I didn't answer that question before. Thank you for asking it again. So She Global, She Summit was really a different journey than the first company. The first company, I just started making money immediately. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't even plan a lot. It just sort of fell on my lap or, you know, it, it sort of flowed into it. Um, whereas this time, you know, it was like when I was pitching women's empowerment to brands, they just didn't get it. I was definitely a few years early. I've actually always been a few years early. And I do often say that, like, we are literally like a futurist on the movement. So in terms of getting through those first few years, I think it really taught me to get super, super lean, super smart about leveraging. We had interns. Um, It was finding that, you know, but, but those initial tactics were like finding that one or two core people that whatever budget I have, this is who my budget is going to go to. And then they will put in like their heart is there and their skill is there. And I think finding that key right hand person is huge because you can't do it like you can only do so much yourself. And so I think that that is a priority piece in terms of like actual manpower or woman power. (laughs) And then separately from a product standpoint, okay, is it your website? Is it your marketing? Is it your event? Or what is it that you actually, from a product standpoint and from a manpower standpoint, 
if I have $5,000 to spend a month, if I have $10,000 to spend a month, if I have $2,000 to spend, it's being super, super thoughtful about, you know, what can get me, like what's going to, the 80-20 rule, like 20% of what you do really matters the most. And so how can you always thinking, thinking the 20, you know, 20%, what matters the most in X period of time? And then also, you know, what can you, trying not to take on too much, trying not to launch like the world and swallow the ocean and instead take sips of water. You know, I think that was another piece of it that, you know, looking back and even today, like all the lessons learned is, you know, making sure you're not trying to do too much and focusing on those few key pieces that will bring in a, that chunk of revenue, that phase of revenue. Then once you have those more phases of revenue, then you can actually build on that to maybe launch that second idea or that third idea, et cetera. You know, but it was really hard and shocking um, in the sense that because it had always come so easily to me, the dollars had actually come much easier to me when I was younger. But I know that at the same time, it really built my leadership. It really built my and I say obstacles and, and you know, entrepreneurship is adversity. It is it is literally, you know, after every uh, one of my favorite authors, Erwin McManus says, you know, behind every war is like another battle comes another battle. <laughs> like you have like this quiet and like, OK, things are pretty like, smooth for a little while. And, but there's always something but obstacles create the opportunities and the resilience piece is you know is staying in it for the long game and for the long term and i think that how much looking back the value like did i hit that seven figures like did i hit that point that i thought i would have hit so much earlier on no but what i gained out of the journey is more valuable to me and so that i think is like how do you define entrepreneurial success too is another you know, you have to really ask yourself, like, what's your goal with the business that I'm trying to create? Is it about making a certain amount of money and providing an X lifestyle? Is it about, okay, I want to impact X number of people. And that, that's what matters first in this area. Like, what do you define a success? I think lots of entrepreneurs will just start something and like, oh, this is going to be successful. And, you know, and then I'm going to be, be able to afford a nicer apartment or like do this again or something. And, you know, you've got all your corporate friends that are like living the life, right? <laughs> uh, so I think that, I think defining what success looks like and but you're going to gain the education that you're going to gain going through the hardship is really the most rewarding. And you're going to have that wisdom, you know, um, that's going to bring you next levels of success later on. So for that first conference, so it sounds like you had some challenges. You thought it was going to be a little bit easier. But what did you do first? Did you ask? Did you go to sponsors first before you even had speakers and yes, attendees? Yeah. So I did the deck. So tactically, I did the deck. This is what we are. And it was almost like funding first, like getting getting those brands, pitching the brands, raising the capital, and then obviously booking the minimal viable logistics that had to be booked, like a date, a venue, mm -hmm. um, but not worrying about other things until later on. Um, and then from there, it was, you know, revenue was, you know, marketing and sponsorships, and it was ticket sales. So getting that piece going. So yeah, it was like you first you're focusing on, you know, the meaning, the messaging, the brand, like the brand strategy, then you're focusing on, you know, the marketing plan, and you know, which at that point involved pitching sponsors and, you know, those, those types of things. How do you convince sponsors to give you money before you have the attendee numbers that you could show them or the speakers that you could show? Them? Um, so how do we convince sponsors to give you, well, a lot of that is in your deck and is in your marketing. It's like, you know, showing who you are, like anything that leverages credibility. So at that point, I had interviewed 200 people. I had lots of faces to show of who would, you know, the, the, the caliber of speakers that would potentially speak, so on and so forth. And you said that you found a partner pretty quickly early on? To work with? Uh, that was a right-hand person. Right-hand person? Yeah. Okay. No, I, I've, I've been doing this on my own the entire time. Gotcha. And how'd you find that right-hand person? You just hired somebody? Through networking, you okay. know, I like there was, you know, like women that I was meeting that was really into women's issues. There was a Step Up Women's Network was a nonprofit that was doing stuff in the women's professional development space. I asked her, she was unavailable, but she's like, I do know the right person for you. Mm. And her name was Selena at the time. And so she was that initial right person. And that's the other thing. Your right-hand people are going to come and go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I would say over the last seven, eight years, I've had three, you know, and usually they, they stay for a few years and then, um, yeah, and then some, or sometimes you make them your partner. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you started a business that was primarily conferences. You did one conference a year, right? Yes. And that business morphed. So when did that shift come about or when did you start feeling a pull in a new direction? like an increase in demand right. and something yeah. different. Well, the fundamental mission of She Summit was always to convene people to lead change and really, you know, rise to their highest potential and lead change for issues that they cared about and really build this new generation of leaders, change what I call change agents, 
And really uh, what happened after doing that for so many years, now we've had over 600 speakers to date. We've obviously had, you know, tens and tens of thousands who have attended and reached hundreds of thousands through the live stream. And, you know, out of that came my own methodology of leadership. So then I wrote, this is how we rise in 2017. It came out Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was really, so this is how we rise. It really, really, we became a leadership company. I realized what we do Um, in every year and showcasing our speakers, but the leadership agenda, like the content agenda, the the 10 sessions, and um, as well as, you know, the book, really what I just realized, and again, back to entrepreneurship, there's going to be iterations of your business, right? Started off as women, and then now it's moved into leadership and more diversity inclusion work. But so today um, we are really, you know, we help companies and organizations. And we also decided to focus a lot on corporate America and move away from, the consumer space because I felt that a, okay, women's empowerment's mainstream now. There's tons, like it's a trillion companies. Everybody and their grandmothers are creating businesses that want to empower women. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what's the next wave of impact? And I just looked at corporate America and I'm like, you know, women actually like leave companies after they have kids to actually, because they like, they so the, the people that can stay in companies to actually make companies more diverse and more inclusive leave. Mm. And I just felt that the, you know, companies and the power of the private sector, corporations are one of the la- largest entities that we have to change and better humanity, better the world. And so I want to build, I've been inspiring this new generation of leaders in the more mainstream space, but I want to now inspire that next generation in the corporate workplace because companies are really like micro societies of humanity and if I can build that change agent who started that like women in tech thing or da 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 inside companies, like that will have a ripple effect in companies and private sector will then have a ripple effect on society. And so but what I realized, like the sweet spot of what we are is like, oh, yeah, you're a conference. Oh, there's a million women's conferences um, was really just our leadership education. And really, all of that has always been curated by me and really my paradigm Uh, my definition of what leadership should mean. So today, um, you know, I actually, beyond the conference, over 100 companies send their teams and employees and talents to our conferences every year. The tickets are around like $1,500. So they're not cheap to attend. Like you are definitely investing in the leadership development of your people by coming in. And by the way, there's a lot of entrepreneurs too that I would say 25% of who attends is also entrepreneurs who have successful businesses and also want to lead their organizations di- like more diversely, or they want to connect with the audience that's there, or they want to put out products and services and really be thinking about how do we do this through an inclusive lens? Like inclusivity today is so important. But the three core products are really the conference in terms of impacting your employees, your culture, and then it's my leadership training. So the How We Rise, um, I keynote, and I also have a new digital leadership training that companies like PepsiCo is mentioning, you know, are are activating with women of color globally around, you know, their business. They have hundreds of thousands of employees around the world, but again, getting, developing talent and developing leaders and getting everybody aligned on the same curriculum is definitely, I see a big trend coming approaching with the flexibility movement, Mm -hmm. because in order to, I mean, most companies wanna get more women into leadership, but then so many leave after having kids, I think it's 40%, you know, lean out of the workforce after they do have children. And so flexibility is an increasingly important movement and just virtual working, right, with technology. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're really a leadership company today offering trainings and offering, you know, the conference is one small piece of the bigger pie today. So I think to most people, especially people that are listening that are not in corporate America, or maybe are but aren't in massive organizations, when you say leadership training, it sounds a bit amorphous. So maybe you can talk about, of all the work that you do when you do leadership training, let's say maybe it's a specific workshop that you do or one of the days in the program, what do you think has the biggest impact where you know, you'll go through a session and you could see that people's... Uh, awareness is changing, that, you know, there's some actual growth happening. Talk about a specific part of the program that you think accomplishes that really well. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, so so quickly, I just uh, tell, you, to tell you more about the content and how it's unique. And I think that that is, I know you were mentioning that you're doing, you teach an entrepreneurial curriculum at mm-hmm. NYU, correct? Mm-hmm. I teach it at SUNY. And, at SUNY, yeah, right. And management at NYU. Right. So we were just like, we were nerding out <laughs> earlier about cur- yeah. curriculum. And I And for me, so, you know, a big part of our movement is really redefining leadership as uh, giving leadership a new definition, uh, which is, uh, I call it whole life leadership. And it's empowering people to, you know, rise to their highest potential as 
um, as what I say, impactful leaders, inclusive leaders, and whole life leaders. And um, the first thing is, is that, you know, leadership should not just mean leading your business and your team well, and like driving revenues and, you know, or like you think government or business, it's like, it should mean leading your whole life well. And so, cause again, like the current, like we need, we need to lead, you know, we have many departments that make up our life, like whether you're a, a spouse or a parent or, you know, your mental health. So whole life leadership is definitely uh, critical. If we're, if we want to have gender equality, I don't believe gender equality is ever going to be possible and healthy and sustainable. Like families are going to be healthy. Workplaces are going to be healthy without teaching our young people and all that we need to, leadership needs to mean leading our whole life well. So that's a one major aspect of the curriculum. Another piece is that leadership is often thought of as like, you know, so many people don't think of themselves as leaders. They're like, oh yeah, well, I, I associate with like a middle-aged white man running, you know, a Fortune 500 company or like a head of state. Whereas like leadership really means leading from where you are and that you are, I actually believe that it's every single human being's potential to be a leader and that leadership should mean leading change, leading change for what you care about, for issues you care about, right? That is leadership. So leadership needs to be impactful and purpose-driven. And then the other piece is being an inclusive leader. So um, that's a really big buzzword today is that if you think about a community in general, like or a body of people, right? Like the whole body of people will thrive like all the people have diversity, all the people have different traits and backgrounds and expertise. And so in order for a body of people to really fully give that community the best in them and the diversity and the potential inside of them, we all need to be inclusive and not exclusive. Like we need to create space and show up and all recognize that we have judgments and biases based on, we can just like look at how somebody's dressed or how somebody talks or what somebody does and just have these automatic biases of um, or blind spots. It's called unconscious bias. It's a big conversation. So, you know, also that the new definition of leadership also needs to be inclusive. Um, so this is sort of just this new paradigm and new definition of leadership that we're teaching as a part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And to me, if you think about, you know, if every person in the world actually like thought like, hey, I'm a leader, you know, like I'm going to actually aim to be a really great leader and lead my whole life well. And I'm going to be taught how to do that work-life integration and like, hey, I'm coming out of college and I want to be a leader, right? That leadership is accessible and that, you know, that I also want to learn how to be an inclusive leader and an impactful leader and, and actually that I can actually influence other and not just live what I say, live my life, but lead my life for something bigger, for a bigger cause or, or bigger issues. Then, you know, if every single person on the planet actually embraced that definition, then we would have more thriving workplaces, more thriving communities, more thriving families. So I'm really teaching this new paradigm of leadership with the effort of unlocking more inclusive, thriving workplaces, which really is what the movement needs. Hmm. I like that a lot because I think where society is moving, uh, where the economy and various industries are moving is that people need to believe that they're leaders and also be more entrepreneurial. So I think what you were taught early on in your career, which is, you know, in order to be and feel successful, you need to have ownership. You need to create your own things. Uh, that was leadership. That right? was, yeah, exactly. Taking that initiative. And I, yeah, and I think there's something about the power of the word. Like when we don't think of, our, of ourselves as leaders, we actually give up power and we give up our potential. We leave it on the table and we allow other people to make decisions for us. And so there's a shift, right? There's a shift in terms of like, you know, okay, well, I'm just, you know, I really want to get this business going. And I really, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm like, you're like hustling and you're like trying to make ends meet or, you know, you're, or you're, you're just, you're exhausted. I mean, I just want to think about entrepreneurship. I'm like, I just feel the hustle. I just think of the hustle, right? Um, or at least maybe that younger, that younger generation of entrepreneurs. And so, but I think if you shifted and you're like, wait, I'm leading a mission, I'm leading a movement, I'm leading this impact. Like my company, my entity exists to solve a problem for this audience base. And like, yeah, this, this I'm, I'm in, and I call it a macro movement, but you know, you're probably living either, you've either started a movement change for something that doesn't exist, like a positive change that doesn't currently exist for an existing problem, or you're like joining an existing movement and like tackling a different like aspect of it. Mm. You know, so let's just say that it's, you know, it's let's just say it's like, you know, women in technology, you know, and you know, want to get more, you know, like it's you've got a business that like trains women engineers. I'm just making that up, mm. right? But like maybe you focus specifically on training a certain segment and a certain age where like other organizations focus on other areas, right? So 
like recognizing that you're leading that impact, like, you know, you're leading your business and every single person you're hiring, like, are you being thoughtful about the diversity of your team and the diversity of skills? Are you being inclusive? Are you a humbled leader or are you, you know, like, do you care about the growth and the development of your people? Like, you know, like, are, are like, are you tapping into if you have a person, if you have a new intern on your team, right? Um, have you really spent the time to really understand like what their passions are, what their skills are to really unlock what's in them, right? Mm-hmm. That inclusivity piece is so important. And so the leadership word just shifts everything. Mm-hmm. And I think many of us are not raised with that term being accessible. So that's really a big part of, you know, the movement that we're we're teaching. Yeah, I agree with that. I think everybody has the potential to be a leader at the very least, uh, can display their leadership qualities. Uh, similarly, everybody has the potential to be an entrepreneur. It all just means that you learn how to make decisions for yourself. You learn how to behave in situations that aren't defined for you, and you're comfortable with taking initiative when nobody else is. Claudia Chan, of She Summit and, of course, author of This Is How We Rise. You can find more about what Claudia is doing and the work that she's doing for other organizations at shesummit.com. Claudia, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has really been a pleasure, and we're looking forward to following your journey and following how you're inspiring and continue to inspire uh, leaders and women leaders as well. Thank you. This is so much fun. Thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you, Claudia. You.